what's up builders club tv nation you got dewan jones here your favorite home business content creator your professional stay-at-home dad hey you know how we do it welcome to another episode family of a day in the life the only show on the internet family that gives you an inside look an exclusive look at the successful lifestyles of the home business network marketing elite we're gonna uh you know share the lifestyle take you on a virtual field trip if you will but most importantly we're gonna make sure you get the concrete truth about how to go out and kill it go crush it in your business that's what we're here for lifestyle meets personal development family i got someone with me uh tonight that is uh amazing in this industry doing some awesome things helping a lot of people uh win big you've seen her on the show before and we're so excited to have her back last time we spoke to her she was on her way to earning her two hundred and fifty thousand dollar ring well i'm excited to share with you that she's well on her way to earning her half a million dollar ring uh, she's one of the top builders in her company of over 40,000 distributors uh, and she's just a leader and one of the best in the game when it comes to presenting presenting the information in fact that's our topic tonight family is becoming a great presenter i wanted to reach out and get one of the best of the best i've seen her present on many occasions and i tell you she has this aura this energy about herself that when she presents it it doesn't even matter what the information is you probably are going to sign up because she has that type of energy uh just one of the best to do it i got her right uh now with this let me get her on camera family and we actually caught her this time uh in the kitchen all right let's see what she's cooking up we know she's cooking up a major business but let's see what she's cooking up uh in the kitchen jp what's going on hey dewan how are you my friend, it's always a pleasure and a privilege to be on with you uh, in Builders Nation. You you have just an amazing platform. I'm so honored to be on. And since the last time we talked, we've gone from 40,000 to 50,000 oh, reps worldwide. Wow. So we are Clap definitely growing today. And um, I just I just love what you're doing for network marketers around the world. Hey, well, we definitely appreciate it. Uh, we're more appreciative of you coming on. Uh, we see, you know, you killing it, killing the game, crushing it. You know, uh, you're a big part of that 50,000 agents in your company. But you know what? We see you doing something else on social media, and that's making us hungry. <laughs> I see some of your posts, and I'm like, oh, my God, if this woman don't put these pots and pans down and seasoning salt, she's going to make me go crazy because I can't get a – they haven't created virtual plates or scratch and sniff uh, – uh, social media yet so i'm just sitting over here going right. crazy but i'm glad that we got you in the kitchen what are you cooking uh behind behind us right here I, I am cooking something very quick i got travel parties tonight i got other things to do so i'm not going crazy so i'm doing some turkey nachos you know <laughs> oh, i'm a texas girl we're in houston so we do okay. what's called tex-mex okay. which isn't exactly real mexican food but <laughs> <laughs> it'll do <laughs> it's it, 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 it's Faux Mexican, okay? So <laughs> I'm doing some turkey nachos today. Man. And so um, all I'm really doing is, is grounding uh, some ground turkey meat. Mm -hmm. And I am, and, and it's really in the way you season it. Uh -huh. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh -huh. It is all in the way you're seasoning it. And you can okay. choose to put any ingredients you want in it. Mm -hmm. Duane, I promise you, you cannot mess this dish up. Okay, okay. That's easier said than done, JP. First I of all, we, we have to find out what type of seasonings you putting in there because um, I know a lot of us going to be lost. Cumin. Cumin. Garlic powder and onion powder. Okay. And some seasoned salt okay. and some taco seasoning. So so just some basic things that you have in your pantry. You know, this okay. is stuff everybody has. Okay. Oh, that's pretty simple. That's pretty simple. Are y'all writing this down? Let, <laughs> as a matter of fact, get something to write down. Cause JP is hooking up the, the um, turkey nachos and you're going to want to know all the ingredients family. <laughs> Smash the like button. Let, let folks know that they do not want to miss this episode. Share this with all of your friends. Um, while you're cooking and while we're getting the meat season, I talked to the family a little bit before we brought you on to tell them that um, we're here to talk to you also 
about you know becoming a great presenter you have some travel parties tonight which is a big part of building your business and you're going to be presenting but i know one of the things that people have a huge anxiety about is that part of the business knowing that that's a crucial part of growing in your business is one day being able to present the information uh do you remember your first time presenting like getting in front of the room and what that was like I remember getting in front of the room and messing it completely up. You know, Dewan, people want to be prepackaged. They want to come to the table perfect because they see their leaders doing it. And what they don't understand is everybody had to be bad before they were good, good before they were great, mm. great before they were exceptional. Mm. So everybody messed it up royally. We stumbled across our words. We said, you know, all kinds of things, but it's like riding a bike. The more you do it, the better you get. I know that's right. That's right. So a, a few tips, because we know that uh, presenting is something that, uh, you know, it, that's a skill set everyone wants to, of course, eventually master. Uh, can you talk to us about being becoming? How did you become? Because I've seen you close up and personal present <laughs> and I'm always just blown away by your energy <laughs> and just perfection. Uh, you know, when did that how did you evolve as a pre presenter yourself? Well, that's, that's good because, you know, number one, my grandmother, the first grand diva, she's hilarious. And uh, we lost her June 2019, so we oh, missed grandma. But sorry, she yeah. would always, she was very animated. Yeah. But when I was in college at Texas Southern University, I was in pageants. And so mm. um, I had to take some speech classes. Mm. So a lot of people that you see presenting, they didn't come all the way prepackaged. Again, I took speech therapy classes because um, my speech therapist was saying you were not pronouncing your words correctly. You know, you needed to work on that. And so, uh, of course, I'm Ohio girl, but I still got some Texas twang too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, she just really worked on me and pronunciation and things. Um, so I had a little bit of humor from Granny. Uh, Miss Washington was my speech coach and she and they really got me ready uh, for the pageant scene. And so uh, what happened is, uh, you know, really being a part of uh, network marketing, I began to see that it's important that you present. My, my uh, coach said, the more you present, uh, the more you expose, the more you close. Mm. And so that was pretty easy to me, but it's all about your story. And I think that's where we missed it. We jump into presenting the information about the company. We jump into, we have the best opportunity in the, mm -hmm. on the planet. And, and we all think we do. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's what you should think. But it's not so much about your company and the best comp plan and the best. It's about you. You're selling you. People buy you before they buy your company. Mm -hmm. And so, Dewan, the first thing you got to do is master telling your story. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That is that's, that's, some powerful, that's some powerful stuff. And, you know, I've heard that. I know that is the truth because uh, stories tell uh, stories uh -huh. sell. And what's the other part? Facts tell. Uh -huh. right. Facts tell and stories sell. That's right. And if you can sell people on your story. See, I was one of those individuals who I went to college. I got my degree. I got that education, but I was still fired in 2014. And in 2014, in 2000, you know, I lost it all. So JP, okay, I want to ask you specifically, um, like, are there like certain points you hit in your presentation? Like, do you have an order of how you present? And is it like, this is the actual like secret sauce to your presentation that you use every time? <laughs> Before you answer that, I want to find out because I know I can't physically smell the nachos, but I can feel the essence of the meat sizzling in the pan. So can you, t oh, what's the next step on the, on the nachos? Because the turkey nachos sound good. Yeah, well, what we're doing is we got the meat. I just add the seasoning and when you add the seasoning, you got to add a little water so that the seasoning can really melt down in there. Mm. So I got the taco seasoning, I've added that. Now we gotta let that simmer for a couple of minutes. So while we let that simmer and we let that seasoning mm -hmm. marry to the turkey meat, mm -hmm. yes, there is a method to the madness. Mm. And it's all about the story. Your story should really touch on a couple of main points. Your story should make you relatable. People should be able to relate. Because I was let go from my job, everybody can relate to being let go. Right. A lot of people can relate to the repo man. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, not being where you want to be. So it should, it should make you relatable. It, you should also 
um, it should help you to build rapport. Um, you want people to like you. And it's not your job to, um, you know, be fake. You absolutely want to be yourself, but be, um, you know, build that rapport, that camaraderie. Um, you people come to these uh, presentations, typically, um, ain't nobody gonna sell me nothing. So they're uptight. Um, you want to get them to loosen up, to, to melt the ice a little bit. Right. So, so definitely, I love how uh, Pastor Joel Osteen starts his sermons and he tells a joke. Have you ever noticed that, Dewan? Yes. Yes. He'll start off with a joke and mm -hmm. it gets everybody loose. And so sometimes you want, you may want to talk a little bit about something funny or interesting. Um, I'm in travel. So we talk about what's the, your favorite vacation? What's your dream vacation? Get, get everybody. It should also, your story should cover credibility. Mm -hmm. um, who are you as a person? What are some of the things you've done and accomplished? So I'll talk about getting that education. I'll talk about getting the degree. I'll talk about uh, being in corporate America for 20 years. So people say, okay, this young lady hadn't been sitting on her couch. Mm. She actually been out there grinding, right. but the cards were not dealt in her favor. And lastly, it should allow you to have buy-in. Um, you should be able to buy in in the beginning. Closing is not at the end. Mm. You should be closing. You heard of the ABCs? Mm -hmm. Always be Always closing. Be closing. Right, uh -huh. right. Well, you're doing that in the beginning when you're telling your story. Mm. So talk about your dreams, your ambition, who you are, what's your background before you dive into the information. Mm. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Now, JP, do you put beans in your nachos? <laughs> no, but you can. Right. You absolutely can put beans in your nachos. Now, I don't. Yeah. But you absolutely can. I know some people um, don't like. I know it. people who can. Some people don't like beans. I like beans. I like beans. You know, some people don't like beans. I like beans too. Right. I love them. I mean, see, so you're a Texan, so we do beans. <laughs> yeah, you can't go wrong with beans. You can't go no, wrong with you beans. Can't go wrong. Have no, you ever made? I like. I, have you ever made huh? uh, vegan nachos? I've not made them, but I've had them. I think vegan nachos are great uh -huh. for people who are vegan. <laughs> you know what, JP? I, I gave it a shot. I tried to go vegan, and um, <laughs> I failed miserably. But I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get back to to veganhood. In fact, family, anyone, anyone who's a vegan out there, want to put some advice for me in the Big comments? Go ahead and do that because I'm trying to get back to my vegan, my veganhood. But it's, but, but it's, it's so hard. It's so hard. Yeah, vegan is is definitely a sacrifice. You have to be disciplined. Uh, to be vegan. Um, this is your green onion and your cilantro. Oh, there, there we, now we're I talking like, cilantro. Yes, I like fresh herbs. I, to me, you know, you got to have your fresh herbs. You cannot cut corners on that. You can cut corners on a lot of things, but not on your fresh herbs. You got to have, and then I like a little tomato in oh, my yeah. nachos. Oh, well. yeah. Yeah. A yeah hit, hit me with all the vegetables. I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> so Dewan, I was going to say that after you get through telling your story, after you get that accomplished, you definitely want to deliver the message with energy. You know, nobody wants to come to these presentations and be rocked to sleep. Of course, we're not. You don't have to be a motivational speaker. I'm mm -hmm. not asking you to necessarily be a motivational speaker. But I am saying have some energy. I remember going to presentations like this and I was feeling like, oh man, as soon as they, you know, break, I'm out of here. Yeah. But So you definitely want to um, be interesting and interact with your audience a little bit. Um, be articulate, but be authentic. Don't be robotic. You know, don't try to be somebody you're not. I, I find people who have great personalities and then when they start presenting, they just start acting so extra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like, that's not even you. Why are you trying to be so extra and be so different? Right. You know, so be authentic. I think that's the best thing. Okay, so here's a question for you. Uh, some people are terrified of this topic because they do not want to get in front of the room. They do not see themselves in front of the room uh, explaining anything, right? Um, and some people shy away from being called up to the front of the room to be recognized. And it's just it's just a terrifying thing. Here's the question. Yes. Can everybody pre present? Is it necessary for everyone to present? Uh, should everyone work towards presenting? What do you think about mm. it? 
everybody should work towards it, but everybody doesn't have to. That's the mm. beauty. You're building a network. And so you can recruit people who love to speak. If you don't like to speak, recruit a speaker. Mm. Isn't that smart? Uh, oh, I remember yes. one of the, uh, the, the top income earners in the first company I was in. Uh, he was a native of Africa. He was, uh, I mean, making multiple six figures, even six figures a month, I think he was. Um, but he said, I know nothing. He said, I let him do the talking. He talked to his sponsor. He wow. was out earning his sponsor. He said, I know nothing. And mm. he took pride in knowing it, nothing. And guess what? That was relatable. And that's what we said at first, be relatable. There are a lot of people who public speaking scares them. Yes. Um, but eventually they always say you will have to come from the back of the room to the front of the room. Mm. And so if you want to make a lot of money, you won't always have your sponsor. I mean, most good sponsors will launch you. They will help you get started. They will help you get off the ground. But what happens when your organization grows to hundreds of thousands of people and now you have new people to launch? Mm -hmm. Now you're going to have to get out of the drive the uh, passenger seat and go into the driver's seat mm. so but until then recruit some people who like to do what you don't like to do that makes a lot of that makes a lot of sense now jp you present in front of some pretty large rooms you know i've seen you present in front of uh, a lot of people now there are people who get really nervous at the thought of that right the question <laughs> for, for you i have is do you ever get nervous going up in front of a lot of people and if you do what do you do to fight that nervousness and anxiety you know Dewan, uh i don't <laughs> i'm gonna be honest with you <laughs> i don't get nervous wow because i've been doing it for a long time mm. um again i've been in the pageant scene for 20 years um i've been super animated my whole life but i will tell you in my mind there are people just like me Mm -hmm. There are people hungry just like me. There are people who want information just like me. So I guess I break it down to there are people just like I am. Um, they're no better than me. I'm no better than them. I'm just having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, hey, when I'm presenting, I know somebody can relate to my story. And so in my mind, I'm just thinking I'm talking to my friends. Mm, that's powerful. It, yeah, that, I can see that because you're putting yourself in the mind frame of, hey, I'm just having a conversation. These are just ordinary, everyday people just like myself. And I'm just having a conversation, sharing some information with them. Because in settings where that's truly what you're doing, you don't find yourself getting nervous. You're just being yourself and you're just sharing information that you that you have. That makes a, That's that makes, right. Yeah. That makes a ton of sense. So what do we got? What are we doing now? I saw you cutting up the vegetables. You got the Tostitos. Wait. We got the Tostitos. Do and chips to matter? With you. Do chips matter for chips great matter. nachos? <laughs> can you can you make it chips with the matter. with and the Walgreens or Dollar Store chips? Or you got to <laughs> You know, I like I like the, the with the lime. Mm. Now that's just me. I, I like the Tostitos with a henna lime. To me, that is a game changer. Mm. Um, everybody everybody does different things, you know. Um, so do whatever is best for you. Um, now, there are times that I will do a um, a cheese sauce. Today, we're not doing a cheese sauce. So what I did was I did a layer of cheese. Mm -hmm. And so we layered, uh, did a layer of cheese. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to do a layer of meat. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make sure we have lots of meat. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the kind of person who... I'm not going to be stingy on the meat or the cheese. So I'm going to go back after I layer the meat. See that? Oh, that looks good. Now we're going to hit it with some more cheese. We're going to hit it with some more cheese. Oh, man. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. You with me? Oh, we, we with you. You with, you with us, family? <laughs> <laughs> now, this uh -huh. is going in the microwave oh, man. for 30 seconds to melt the cheese. Now, I don't want... I don't want my chips to get stale or anything. I still want them crunchy, mm -hmm. but we're going to melt that cheese. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh -huh. then what we're going to do is we're going to dress the nacho. Oh, yeah. The best part. <laughs> Save the best for last. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. 
So we got our cheese all melty. Now you start doing what you do. Now I like tomato. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like cilantro. I, I just oh, yeah. could eat cilantro. Plenty of cilantro. Like, I'm just gonna see. You see, I just let the cilantro just. You see that? I just go crazy. Yeah, you can't go wrong. You can't. <laughs> you can never have too much cilantro. No, and then I do the green onion. I like the green onion too. Do oh, you yeah. like a little green onion? Oh, absolutely on anything. Yeah, and then you got to get hit it with a little salsa. Now, are you a hot salsa person, medium? Or no. Mild? I'm gonna do the medium or the mild. And okay. to me, you gotta do a little sour cream. What about you? First of all, I've never seen the squeeze sour cream. I think that's genius. <laughs> Whoever came up with that is a genius. Man, do y'all see that family? Now, the next step would be to put it in a box and freeze it and send it to my address, which I'll give to you put later. Put it in the box and freeze it. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Not put it in the box and freeze it. So you got your cheese you got your taco meat which is a, you know your turkey taco meat which is healthier mm -hmm. you got your tomatoes lots of cilantro your salsa and your sour cream now do you have a um favorite drink to wash that down with are you uh, oh. a margarita person you gotta get a, you, you gotta get a margarita right <laughs> are you are you a strawberry you gotta, mango or lime margarita person you know what I recently got into what's called the Hennessy Margarita. What? Yes. See, yes. JP, we, 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 we were supposed to make that on the show. <laughs> <laughs> that when I'm telling now, the Hennessy Margarita is, um, well, let's just say, let me, let me just, well, I'll just show you what that looks like. Oh, you, you, I'll so you're you going to whip it, it up right now? Yeah, I got you. Okay, so we got the official debut of the Hennessy Margarita live right here <laughs> the JP Watkins version right <laughs> now, if we're going to get right let's get all the way right family <laughs> so so why you why you getting the uh, ingredients for the Hennessy Margarita and now now look okay. at the family going to start pulling out their notepad now <laughs> and the pen <laughs> now they got their notepad out uh -huh. so <laughs> any uh final advice for uh, for someone, any final advice for someone who's going to present for the first time? Uh, and, you know, because I remember those moments where your upline sponsor says, tonight's tonight, you're presenting tonight, and you just oh, really yeah. faint, right? <laughs> any advice for yeah, your we, first we, time presenters? We throw you on out there. Oh, yeah. Do it. Just do it. Just do it. Do not be intimidated by anybody you go out there and mess it up nobody knows that you mess it up. just go do it right so this is the margarita mix mm. jose cuervo coconut pineapple wow okay you put your margarita mix in there and you put your fresh pineapple juice you got your dull pineapple juice mm -hmm. okay you put your pineapple in there so you got your pineapple mix pineapple juice and then you go ahead and you put in your henny hen mm to top it off okay mm -hmm. so that's these that there's three ingredients that's it oh that's pretty simple three ingredients that's, that's pretty it. simple simple super simple three ingredients and then you just and you got the official margarita glass don't don't be a home family with a margarita putting it in a kool-aid glass get you a margarita glass and go ahead and be official Right, JP. <laughs> you got to. Don't, don't you got to. You got to. You got to. You got to be official. And once you're doing your nachos and you have your Hennessy margarita, mm -hmm. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Off, off the hook. <laughs> off the hook. So off the chain. So I mean, thank you for your advice on how to present. Uh, you know, we know the family is going to take that information and run with it because it's true that presenting is a very, very powerful skill set to master. Obviously, you've mastered it and it's helped you uh, become one of the top 
uh, builders in your company, uh, one of the best presenters in the industry, I believe. And so we definitely appreciate you for coming on, sharing your recipe with us. Now we're going to have you back because, you know, family, if you haven't, you know, if you're not following JP on social media, make sure you follow her on social media because she's always cooking up a storm. She's always coming with great value. Uh, again, she's one of the top people in the industry. You can learn a lot from JP. Uh, and if you're hungry, uh, eat something first before you go to her social media, cause it's going to, it's going to get you some stomach pains like you wouldn't believe um i saw you cook some uh what was that the grits with uh shrimp and something else shrimp it was... and creole grits it was uh creole shrimp and grits mm, mm, mm. where i had the andouille sausage mm, the mm, mm. the heavy cream uh the it, it was kind of like a gumbo but, right but but with grits wow so yeah wow Wow. Well, again, we're going to have you back. Maybe you can cook up that dish next time or maybe something else for us. But we're definitely going to have you back and uh, speak to you more about some of the you know, skill sets that are key and critical, really, to going out there and building your business. So we definitely got to have you back. But thank you for coming on, JP. Well, Dewan, thank you for having me today. Thank you for all you're doing for the industry of network marketing. Uh, there is nobody out here doing what you do, how you do it for the people. And this industry is so underrated. There's so many people who still yet don't know who are corporate mm -hmm. job dropouts like me, people who are thrown away by corporate America who don't know uh, that this amazing uh, industry of network marketing can save their life. So keep doing what you're doing, my brother. Man, I totally appreciate those words from you. And yes, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, we're going to bring it from the underground to the mainstream and let the masses know about the greatest industry in the world. But we thank you for coming on. Going to have you back. Uh, can we get one more look at those nachos? Absolutely. And while JP shows us the nachos, we're going to say goodbye to the family. We'll see you <laughs> next time. Uh, peace. Peace. JP. <laughs> <laughs>